Hello YouTube, Andrew here and welcome back to AB Helicopters. Today we're diving deep into helicopter maintenance and overhaul and specifically looking at the crucial aspect of Robinson Helicopter Maintenance, the 12 year or 2,200 hour overhaul process. Firstly, however, we need to look at some of the basics of aircraft maintenance and why certain components need to be replaced. Helicopters, like all aircraft, have life-limited components. These are parts designed for a specific number of flight hours or calendar years, after which they must be replaced to ensure safety and, obviously, their optimal performance. To understand why life limits exist, we have to first look at the process of metal fatigue, however. Metal fatigue is a bit of a sneaky enemy, silently weakening critical components in your helicopter until they can catastrophically fail. As a pilot, understanding its impact is crucial for safe operation and understanding the maintenance needs of the helicopter. The most infamous example of metal fatigue in aviation is two fatal flights uh, in-flight breakup events in 1954 of the de Havilland Comet, the first jet airliner. Extensive investigation, including putting a entire aircraft fuselage in a large water tank in Farnborough and subjecting it to repeat pressurization cycles simulating a flight, resulted in the redesign of the aircraft, including the square passenger windows being replaced with circular ones to reduce stress concentrations. Unfortunately, accidents due to metal fatigue are not new and they're not constrained to just aviation. The Versailles train crash in France in 1842, in which the axle of a train snapped due to fatigue, causing the train to derail and the death of 55 persons, is just one example of this. Metal fatigue is the gradual weakening of metal components due to repeated stresses, like bending a paperclip back and forth until it snaps. In rotorcraft, this obviously can have catastrophic consequences if it were to occur in flight. Imagine millions of tiny cracks slowly forming in critical parts like the main rotor, mast, landing gear or engine components. The cracks are a result of repeated stresses experienced during flight and they come from uh, things such as vibrations either from engine operation, rotor flapping, turbulence, all of this causes vibration that causes stress to components. In-flight manoeuvres, where takeoffs and landings and manoeuvres like torque turns put additional strain on specific parts. And the key to minimising stress in dynamic components is to fly conservatively, especially when operating close to the maximum published weight or speed power limits. Exceeding the maximum continuous power when flying at high speed is another way to increase the stresses experienced by the road system and thereby reducing the safe in-service life of the components. An example of this is an investigation into a Robinson R44 crash in New Zealand, which was used for crop spraying. Uh, the accident report summarised the types of turn used by the operator during spraying operations, especially when the helicopter was close to the maximum permitted all-up weight, likely subjected the main rotor blades to additional stresses not envisaged by the manufacturer. The manufacturer had therefore not been required to consider the increased loads and cycles of agricultural flying when calculating the service life of the rotor blade. As these stresses accumulate, microscopic cracks continuously grow, eventually leading to a complete failure. A fatigue crack can lengthen rapidly and the component will lose its structural strength. Obviously, if you find yourself in a situation where an unusual or severe vibration develops in flight or you feel a change in the control responses, you should land immediately and obviously have the helicopter inspected prior to any further flight. Detecting and addressing fatigue before it's too late is crucial. Thankfully, several methods exist. First up, we have non-destructive testing, NDT. Techniques like eddy current, x-rays, liquid penetrant dyes and ultrasonic inspections can reveal hidden cracks beneath the surface of a component. Critical components are subjected to fixed interval inspection routines to ensure that any cracks are detected early before they can compromise flight safety. Which leads us on to life limits. Many components have predetermined lifespans based on fatigue resistance. Replacing them before they hit that limit helps prevent any fatigue failures. This is the basis of the 2,200 hour overhaul of the Robinson 22, R44 and RC6 series of helicopters. Common components include main and tail rotor blades, rotor drive shafts and specific engine components. Obviously, 
ignoring life limits that are set due to fatigue concerns are extremely dangerous. Invalidates the airworthiness certification as expired components have a dramatically higher or drastically higher risk of failure, even if they appear to be visually intact. The fatigue cracks are microscopic. So next we need to understand what the impact is of metal fatigue on a helicopter. Fatigue cracks can develop in vital structural components, such as the main rotor mast, blades, fuselage sections, landing gear and skids, compromising their strength and leading to in-flight breakages, which can potentially lead to loss of control, structural collapse and fatal accidents. The issue also extends to the power plant. Engine components like crankshafts, connecting rods, turbine blades are all susceptible to fatigue due to the high stresses, vibrations and often high temperatures that they're working on. Internal cracks, which would otherwise go unnoticed until failure, can lead to engine failure or catastrophic in-flight disintegration. Of course, there are other reasons that components get changed over time. For example, the Robinson helicopters were designed with ease of maintenance in mind. So instead of numerous greasing points, the helicopters use self-lubricating or Teflon coated joints on the rotor hub bearings, for example. So whilst they don't need to be regularly purged of old grease, over time they do need to be replaced as the Teflon coating starts to degrade. Most helicopters have a variety of life limited components, which results in a complex spreadsheet to track individual parts and their inspection requirements. The Robinson helicopter series uses a slightly different method, where the entire helicopter has to go for a comprehensive overhaul or rebuild at 2,200 hours or 12 years, whatever is sooner. By synchronising the parts life so they all require inspection or replacement simultaneously, the maintenance scheduling requirements are significantly simplified. Now, let's look at an overhaul for the Robinson R44. Where can an overhaul be done? Well, firstly, the Robinson Helicopter Company offers a dedicated overhaul facility with experienced technicians and access to genuine parts at a factory in Torrance, California. The typical factory Robinson overhaul takes around four to six weeks, depending on the scope of work and parts availability. However, there may be an extensive waiting list until the helicopter can be scheduled into work. And you have to actually consider how the helicopter ends up in Torrance in California in, in the United States. Outside of the US, Flying to a factory may not be to a, a viable option, so a helicopter obviously needs to be disassembled, placed into a shipping container, or taken by boat to America. This increases costs and extends the duration that the helicopter is out of service. The actual overhaul kit required for the overhaul has a lead time of about, currently about 21 to 24 weeks, so the whole process needs to be planned well in advance. Now, the advantages of sending the helicopter back to the factory where it was first produced include the fact that the Robinson technology uh, technicians are factory trained and they have in-depth knowledge on the specific R44 or 22 model. They work on these aircraft exclusively, day in, day out, and they have quick access to the genuine Robinson parts. The work also comes with a warranty on the parts and labour covering the first year or first thousand hours, whatever is first. Additionally, you have the advantage that the whole process is streamlined from the as the factory manages the entire overhaul process in-house from disassembly, overhaul, respraying and the flight testing, reducing any hassle throughout. And they have a separate assembly line purely for overhauled helicopters. And when it comes back from the overhaul, it's almost like the helicopter is, is brand new. Any defect is rectified and replaced. Now, Robinson estimates that the work takes about 240 hours of labour for the overhaul, but this doesn't include any additional defects that need to be rectified that are found during the disassembly or any modifications or upgrades that you select. From the website, they quote currently at US dollars as a base price for the overhaul, excluding the, the extras or the upgrades. That's it. There are around 450 approved Robinson service centres around the world. This means that the technicians have attended and passed one of their approved courses in uh, California and demonstrated that they have this significant, the sufficient knowledge, experience, tooling and capacity in their organisation to safely overhaul and rebuild the helicopter. And there may well be cost advantages um, for choosing a service centre instead of sending back to the factory. Location, price, duration, uh, slot availability all come into the selection of where you're going to send the helicopter for an overhaul. Average overhaul duration is around two to four months. However, combined with the kit lead time, this all needs to be scheduled at least six months uh, in advance. The video that's showing at the moment is of an R44 helicopter being overhauled at HeliServe, a Robinson approved service centre, um, which specialises in overhauls, and that's located in Leeds in the United Kingdom. And it's reproduced with the kind permission of the managing director of the, the company. 
Once you've chosen whom is going to perform the work, the next step is ordering a kit. Now, the price list is regularly updated and freely available from the Robinson website. Uh, for the basic kit, it costs around 182,000 US dollars. However, Robinson helicopters use the concept of cause and deliberately destroy parts as a method to ensure that some life limited components don't make it back into the black market in, as spares. So, after the rebuild, the cores, the sum of components that are considered cores, are sent back to the factory and you can receive a rebate up to, at a maximum, about 42,000 uh, US dollars, depending on the condition. Around three months later, once they've been uh, inspected, Romson can then reuse aspects of these components into overhaul items and have their calendar life reset. Example of a core component include the main and the tail rotor gearbox, the swash plate and the clutch. Other life limited items, such as the blades, are totally useless once they have hit their life limit. Um, but the factory requires the blade roots to be cut off and sent back as proof, so they're absolutely certain that those components cannot be reused on any other serviceable helicopter. Inside your overhaul kit, you get new items such as main rotor and tail rotor blades, tail rotor drive shafts, pitch change links, bearings, new V belts for the engine to the drive chain. And during the overhaul, the helicopter literally gets stripped back down to its basic frame and then rebuilt. On top of this, you've got the option to overhaul the interior with new seats, carpets, insulation, flight controls, which adds another nine to ten thousand dollars depending on the material and the colour. And it's not a mandatory item, but after 12 years, many owners do go for this option. Um, just to make sure the helicopter comes back from the overhaul looking pretty much brand new inside and and out. Whilst the overhaul involves changing key components, there's a substantial amount of inspection of other components and wiring that has to be carried out to confirm the condition and make sure there's no degradation, fretting or damage from corrosion or in-service wear and tear. As an example, this includes the whole lower frame assembly and the flight control push-pull tube assembly for the main rotor and the tail rate are pretty important flight controls. Um, all the details of what needs to be replaced are listed in the maintenance manual. And that maintenance manual is available on the Robinson website. Go in under section 1.102 um, to find out a little bit more if you're interested. And that also provides the difference in what needs to be done for a 12 year inspection and actually what needs to be done if you're hitting the 2200 hour limit, a slight variation. On top of this, the engine needs to have some sort of maintenance performed on it. Various options exist from exchanging your own engine for a freshly rebuilt one, uh, overhauling your own engine with a kit for overhaul, or purchasing a brand new engine directly from Lycoming, uh, which is the most expensive option. And the prices for this range from about 75,000 to 152,000 US dollars, depending on what you go for. Now, during the overhaul, the helicopter is stripped back to its very basic structure, and it's common for avionics upgrades to be performed, such as installing a new radio, GPS, transponder, or installing the latest optional features, such as the Heli-SAS autopilot, uh, copper camera, air conditioning, or impact-resistant windshields, if the helicopter serial number is sufficiently compatible with these upgrades. One UK-based overhaul uh, centre advised that for R44 Raven 2, the average cost, including labour, overhaul kit, engine rebuild and a respray, was about £290,000, or about US dollars However, that doesn't include UK tax, currently 20%, which increases the whole cost to about £350,000. Whilst the whole overhaul process can be eye-wateringly expensive, there's a lot of highly specialised experience and time that goes into the incredibly detailed process of inspecting the aircraft, either using specialist techniques, tools and equipment, or visually using you know, 10 times magnification, for example. And it means the value of the helicopter on the used market is maintained. And in some cases, owners can end up selling aircraft for more than their original purchase price. Now, let's go into a brief overview of what actually happens during the overhaul. This video playing in the background is an R44 that's been overhauled by Prairie Air, a Robinson overhaul specialist based in America, and they've kindly allowed us to reproduce this video. Now, the first thing to occur is the removal of the main and the tail rotor blades, followed by the tail cone being detached from the helicopter. Next up, the engine can be dropped from underneath the helicopter and the whole frame exposed. The gearbox and other components are taken off and the supporting structure and skid assembly can then be removed.
The structural frame is then paint stripped and subjected to a detailed non-destructive test to see if there's any small hairline cracks that have developed. Often they use fluorescent dye penetrant testing. If it's all okay, then they have to all be powder coated and painted before they can be reassembled. The skids similarly have to be disassembled and checked. The flight controls, rods, linkages, the cyclic collective too get removed. Inside the cabin, depending if the carpet, seats and headliners are being replaced, these two need to be disassembled. And specialist tooling is required for certain activities, such as removing the engine cooling fan and when rigging the flight control pitchlings. So we said the engine gets overhauled or replaced, and at this stage the helicopter is a bare shell, so it's also um, at this stage that new avionics or optimal features can be installed on the helicopter if required. After all the components have been rebuilt and reattached to the helicopter, the rotor system then needs to, be un uh, needs to undergo track and balance to make sure that the vibration is kept to a minimum. This is first achieved statically when the individual blade weight and centre of gravity is precisely measured, and small adjustments to the tip weights are made to match the two blades up. Next, during a number of ground runs and then further during the flight test phase after the rebuild, a series of flights are made at a range of speed conditions with a blade tracking kit installed to allow engineers to make some changes to the weight of the blade or adjust the pitch control rods so that the blades track in the same plane. And this is to reduce the rate of vibration throughout the flight envelope. The flight test also ensures that the flight control rigging has been correctly set up. For example, to check the minimum blade pitch um, which is achieved by checking the minimum rotor RPM when in order rotation to make sure it can be achieved when the collective is fully lowered. Now that's it for the moment. Uh, hopefully this video has been very informative and provides some insight into the whole overhaul process. Look out for further aviation safety videos and until next time, fly safe.